What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this wood. Today, I've got a very spooky, very spooky skeleton guy with a giant axe. He's actually a white. He's the Lord of Undeath. His name is Krell, and we're going to paint him up. So, the colors we're going to be using today, hopefully, we'll see if we can get through this tutorial with all of these colors, are... Hawk Turquoise in its fancy schmancy new case. Codex Gray. Calton Brown. Scab Red. And Deneb Stone. So make, make sure you got those five. And um, we're going to get started first by spray priming our miniature. And as you can see, I already glued the sand to the base. And um, like I said in my other videos, that's makes it easier for me once uh, I spray prime it so that it locks all the sand onto the base. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. Alright players, let's get started. Uh, as you can see I decided to paint or spray prime my Krell in black instead of my usual gray just because it's such a predominantly dark model black uh, is is easier to build up from in this case usually I go with gray but for this one I thought I'd go with black okay so starting from the inside we are going to use Deneb stone and we are going to paint this guy's all, all of the bone areas for step one all of the bone areas and I'm just going to go from bottom to top so let's start with his, his little toeses base coats take the longest I was doing the annotations for my lizardman video and um, it just made me realize like man doing these first videos are always the hardest to get through. If you're like me and you're painting this, you're going to see on this guy's left hand that it just looks like a big fine cast mess. You're going to say, what the, what is, what's going on with his fingers and his hand and it's all, looks all jacked up, but the reason is because it's not a whole skeleton hand. His hand is wrapped in um, like those leather, dark leather straps that we're gonna paint Calton Brown later. But just looking at him right now, I was like, fine cast is so ugly, and I cannot tell what is what. It's just funny because it's supposed to be like super duper detailed, but sometimes when they, you know, when it looks sloppy like that. Maybe it's just because it's all, it's all jet black and I can't see the details, I can't really pick out the details at this point. Okay, um... For me, I'm going to be using the Games Workshop 360 of Krell, just like I did for Isabella. It's going to be so much easier to do that. And now we're painting the horns on the helmet. Next thing we're going to do is continue using the Den of Stone and paint the skulls and the cloak. So I'm going to start with the cloak.
I have to say though, this model is so awesome. I think this, the, the other White King in the plastic kit and Isabella were just so well done. Fine test hole that won't. Next thing we're going to do with the skulls. I haven't actually read the the books that Krell is in, the Time of Legends, the Sigmar ones. I've heard from couple of people at my local hobby place that um, style of writing is just gets bigger and bigger and um, it's of, of course it's obviously not like the original um, Warhammer fantasy that we all kind of grew up with they changed things and added things and just made them a lot bigger. I love uh, reading fluff and background and and all that kind of stuff. So it's hard for me to deal with retcons or things that go back and kind of change what I what I remember and grew up with. That's why it was so hard for me to get into third edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay because it's so different, so much has changed from second and first. I feel like the first edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay was really geared towards having fun and being uh, allowing the players to really do almost anything they want. And you can still kind of do that with second and third edition, but second edition was a lot more focused on being really dark and grim because second edition was meant to coincide with the uh, Storm of Chaos campaign so everything in second edition references it or it talks about how it just happened and how it totally changed the face of the, the Warhammer world. Because I guess Middenheim was besieged in it, so in, in all of the Warhammer Fantasy second edition roleplay, um, you've got Middenheim um, just being a total wreck and all these places being just messed up because of the campaign. So that was interesting, but... Alright, our denim stone colors are done. Now we're going to move on to the Calton Brown. I'm taking a look at the fur on the back of this guy's cloak too. It's got a very uh, bleached bone kind of finish to it, so we might end up painting that Calton Brown in just a little bit. Or not Calton Brown, but Denim Stone. We might go back and do that. I wish, I hope GW releases um, 360 figures for more of their products. Even regular infantry stuff. It's just so helpful. Oops. Not, not like the way I'm holding my Krell model right now. Sorry, I keep... I notice how much my <laughs> my cork stand makes it into my tutorial videos just because I'm holding it badly, so I'm sorry, I apologize. Igor, you should be watching out for that. I'm sorry, master.
I have a hard time operating this camera while I'm eating my burrito. Igor, how many times have I told you no eating while we're filming? I'm sorry, Master. I've got the munchies. Leather. leather. So we're looking for the leather... going to be painting, since we've got the Calton Brown out, are the um, dark bronze metallic parts. Like the shoulder pads, the like Mostly any metal on this model are going to be painted that dark brown. And this is the consistent way that I paint them, that I paint these surfaces across all of my vampire cast models. So it's good to be consistent. So you've got two types of metal on this model. You've got the dark bronze, and then you've got the dark red of the armor. So if you're having a hard time splitting them up, differentiating them, just make sure that you double check with the, a product shot or the Games Workshop website. And the great thing, or the not so great thing about all the, the fine detail on this is that um, they did a lot of great corrosive uh, decaying effects with the mold and until it's totally painted up and until you work your magic with your brush it could totally be misconstrued as um, just fine cast shenanigans okay, his left knee pad is this bronze dark bronze color, not the right so make sure you the right. I believe that is that. There's no real bronze on the axe, oh, except for the bottom of the axe we're going to paint. And the little spikes. There are spikes right at the bottom of the axe head that are this dark bronze color. There. Is there anything else? Oh, the bat on the chest plate. here. Alright, so next step, the red armor. Okay, so step three, we are going to take our Krell model and I'm actually taking some Chaos Black and what I'm doing is I'm getting into the recesses that were not hit by the spray primer. 
so like between the legs and the uh, corners of where the the cloak meets the armor. Kind of always want to make sure that uh, you have a solid dark shaded background before you continue. Or what you could do is you could fix it later with bad at black, but when you're doing your washes, I just find it easier. Okay, scab red. We're gonna get started with the armor. I'm gonna leave the, the leg armor till later since the Chaos Black is still drying. Gonna go against convention and start from the top and go down. So happy tomorrow's President's Day in America. You can get the day off to play video games, paint silly men, silly little monster men, do other household things. Um, Monday is usually, in my local area, the, the day that it's like our games night for the local store. The local store here in, on Oahu in Hawaii, or one of the two, one of the two that I, I frequent, Other Realms, they, they're a great store. They sell comics, miniatures, all sorts of stuff, paints. Um, they rent out these ballrooms across from them on the in the shopping complex where they're located and I've been going there for game nights and events and stuff ever since I was like ever since I was a little kid I remember in middle school going to games days and I don't remember if they did had the Monday nights but they would always have like some kind of games day uh, every couple months and I think it's so important to have stuff like that Especially if you're growing up, it really, it really uh, fosters in you a, a love of the hobby. Plus you get to meet people and you know, you're not just like cooped up in your own, in your own little man cave. Or woman cave for those of you out there who watch my videos that happen to be of the fairer gender. It's good to socialize. But yeah, they, they have like Warhammer miniatures, games like, uh, you know, Privateer Press, Malifaux, all sorts of stuff on, on one room. And then they rent the other room to have like tabletop pen and paper traditional role-playing games like that and I think it's so awesome 
that they spend the money, they invest the money to get these conference rooms like just about every week on a Monday night to support their customers who, you know, if not for them, would have to spend uh, their gaming time in, you know, in their garage or at their house. So it's good, it brings everybody together. I mean, it's gotta be good for the store too. We're earning them some, some extra cash from people who come to play. But I just think it's so awesome. Kudos, if you're ever on Oahu, you should totally check out the two gaming stores that we have. Other Realms and um, Armchair Adventurer. Okay, so I think that's that's it. While I was rambling, I finished painting the armor. Oh, it's starting to look good. It's starting to look good. Next thing we're gonna do is, um, oh yeah, you might have noticed I painted the denim stone onto the cloak on the back. It's just easier. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint his um, axe haft turquoise. Oh, I hope I hope they don't get rid of hot turquoise. I don't know how they're gonna change the paints. Just hope they don't get rid of it. Oh, I should have watered that down and put it on my Get -A Wet palette. But I just love hot turquoise. I remember when I used to watch old blue table painting videos, and Sean would would talk about all of his teal armies, and I'd be like, oh, it's so so glaringly bad to the eye. But you know, when you see so much so much in this hobby is painted red and black and. Like, I could think off the top of my head, okay, what armies do you know that have red and black as a very dominant theme? Um, Vostroyan Firstborn for Imperial Guard. Well, it's really more red and gold, but like heavy reds. Uh, like, m most, most armies just have a very strong red, and if they're evil, black. Like, vampire counts. You hardly see any real, um, you know, official GW stuff that strongly promotes this bright oceanic blue color that Hawk Turquoise is. So I love, I love using it now. I, I never used to, but I would go for the more um, common bluish blue. Hawk Turquoise is a kind of greenish blue and I, I remember I used to just go for like enchanted blue or regal blue for stuff but all right next we are going to let that dry and we're going to paint Um, we're going to use our hawk turquoise to do some highlighting of the axe. And before we continue, I'm looking at my 360 view on the Games Workshop website and I see that I missed some gold on the axe head itself. One of the people I subscribe to, Keeper of the Fortress, does a lot of great videos. Um, on the hobby and he's also really into the fluff I think especially Space Marines he's a huge Space Marine player um, Dark Angels specifically and he did a review on the Vallejo Liquid Gold series of paints which is alcohol based and not water based so it'll, it would really mess up your brush if you don't constantly take care of it and clean it and um, it settles and the pigment is really heavy but it settles and separates if you, do, if you don't mix it before painting. And I just wonder from the rest of you out there, I think I only have one but I haven't really used it yet. What has your experience been with Vallejo's Liquid Gold series range? So leave me a comment. Um, Alright, so we're gonna get started on the Hawk Turquoise. 
on the axe. So first we're going to kind of do like an edge highlight. So you want just a little bit of paint on your brush. So I'm trying to get it in focus, it's so... Such a close-up detail. Yeah, so for this I found that it's really easy to have too much paint on your brush. So really, get some paint on your brush, wipe most of it off, and then you're just going to kind of lightly feather as high Let's see if this is better. Yeah, let's see if I can paint like this. So I'm starting with the edges and then we're going to work our way to the runes. thinking about why most players don't have painted armies. I am not talking about like master class, you know, heavy metal, standard, but just even <clears throat> base coats and washes nowadays. It's very rare that I see an army that is fully painted to even have just base coats. And I think it's because the base coats are so discouraging to some people. They take the longest, and when you're done with them, you feel like you haven't really accomplished much. And I think that's why, especially if you're younger, you have a hard time uh, continuing with the hobby, because when you try to do something, you only get up to the base coats and you look at it and you're like, this is doo-doo and you don't want to continue. Well, as a veteran painter, I just want to say to all of you guys out there that are discouraged when painting, don't be discouraged, just keep on keeping on. Get the base coats done. By the time you get past the base coats and you actually do a wash, oh, it's so good. So when I'm looking at the edges, oh, look at that, my fault, sorry, I'll fix that later. You're just dragging the side of your brush and then when you're doing a flat surface like this axe head, you want to be careful about just dragging it down like that. <clears throat> my air conditioner turned off. Now it's going to get really hot in my room. I'm going to have to go back. I'm gonna finish this and um, skip to the next part of the video where we will uh, start to highlight the fur. All right, so our model looks really good right now. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get started on um, highlighting the fur, but because the blacks, the blacks of the fur are not all even, what I thought we'd do before we get onto the Codex Gray is actually base coating the fur trim with Caridin granite. And I'm talking about the fur that is around the, um, the boots, the gloves, 
anything that has that dark furry trim. You could go with something like Chaos Black, but then it's going to be even harder to see to pick up the um, to pick up where the the edges are for highlighting the individual you know tufts and strands. Or you could go with something like Adeptus Battlegrave, but Adeptus Battlegrave I think is a little too light unless you dull it down first with with some uh, bad at black. When you've got carrot and granite, it's got a great mixture of black, brown, and uh, gray that really is uh, a good, I feel it's a, it's a great color to use as a base and I don't see it enough. I don't see it enough. I don't see it used enough. I think people are scared of it because they're like, oh, it's not, it's not gray, it's not black. I don't have any use for it. Personally, I love Caridin Granite. I think it's a great color. It's another one I hope I don't get rid of. Oh, I should make a video that's like a wish list. Like, open letter to GW. Please don't get rid of these colors. Whatever you do when you change your color range, What the? Look at this. Do you see this? Look at this. Fine cast! Okay, and the last thing is his little his little mohawk. Why is your little mohawk so cute? Actually, that's not the last thing because some of the skulls have hair. And we're gonna use carried in granite on that. See, this is the reason why I use it, because if you can see inside the mohawk, the primer did not get all the way down into the folds, so you've got light gray, the original color of the fine cast peeking out, and you don't want that. You wanna the job of the spray primer is to cover the, you know, the material that you're painting on and uh, sometimes you just have to go in by hand and fix it otherwise if you keep spraying a lesson that I learned when I first started painting if you over prime your models then yeah sure you get you get the the cracks and the crevices in your primer color but what it ends up doing is it makes your entire model, like all the detail gets clogged elsewhere. You don't want that. And that's really easy to see when you use black as a spray primer color. Oh, on a privateer press note, I know like hardly anybody out there, any of you, collect them or even know that they exist but I was at my uh, one of my modeling store or arm uh, God, what was I saying? one of my hobby stores uh, not the one I was just talking about other realms but the other one armchair adventurer yesterday and I saw that privateer press is coming out with all their you know packs in boxes of stuff now and I saw their pirates of the broken coast have a box now and that made me so excited because there were those guys are the only thing I ever painted of Privateer Press. And they're not they're not like a war machine, hordes, standard typically looking, you know, a steampunk armored kind of faction. They look like Pirates of the Caribbean. Kind of um, you know, Long John Silver with the striped pants and the but like the the detail the detail on the figures just puts Games Workshop's uh, Empire guys to shame, and it, they just look so good, and I was just so tempted to, to buy it, even though I don't personally play it. The only time I painted those guys was for a commission, but I, I love the look of them, those pirates. Okay, so looking at my um, how much time this is taking, I don't think we're actually going to get to 
to start highlighting because all of this carried in granite has to dry but we're gonna end there for today the last thing I want to do before I cut this video off is if you decide that your hot turquoise is a little too bright or you put too much on your axe then what you can do is just always go back over with chaos black and paint from the outside of the black axe in so for example let's say I wanted more black on the blade I would just take my chaos black and drag it down you need a steady hand for this so make sure that you're braced however you normally brace your hand The great thing, like I always say about painting, is nothing nothing is ever for keeps. It's your model. You don't ever have to settle for anything. If you're not happy with it, just go back and fix it. When I was painting the runes, I know I cut the video uh, short last time. You might, may, you might be interested in this part, but don't paint inside the lines for these runes on the axe with your hawk turquoise. Paint outside the outer edges of the arrows. That is what's going to um, create that glow. If you put it on the inside, then um, it'll be harder to highlight and it, it won't pick out the eye as, the eye won't pick it out as easily. So thanks for watching. This was basically just about all of the base coats for our Krell. Um, in the next part of the video, we're going to go over the washes and, or actually before we do that, we're going to have to go over the metallics and then go over the washes, but I think this is a great start. And um, yeah, I hope you're happy with it. I'm happy with it as a beginning, as a beginning um, step in our process of painting Krell. We should be done in one or two more videos. I think getting through these in, in three videos is is an admirable goal getting through these painting tutorials so thanks for watching leave a comment don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already and um yeah let me know what you think leave me a comment and stop talking <laughs>